Hey, welcome back. Uh, you'll have to excuse me, I ate me a zebra cake. Just delicious. Uh, I think today's the day we're going to put the headers on the Ranger. Um, it's my first day off. A couple vacation days. Worked a 13-hour shift, so I'm pretty wore out, but I think I'm going to knock this out. So, I'm not going to film all of it, because y'all don't want to watch me cuss and fling tools for hours on end. So, I got a couple of things to move out of the shop. And uh, I'm going to get it in here and start slinging some wrenches. I'll show you a few things along the way. But what, I'm, what I am going to show you is I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the old manifolds versus the headers and try to explain a little bit on the flow difference. And I've got a little analogy in mind that may help y'all understand why I do certain things. And I'm going to try and do a before and after on the sound. Give you a crank up of the engine without the headers and then with the headers. See if we can see any kind of, you know, difference in tone or anything. And then, of course, it'll, it'll be a little while before I, you know... It's going to take me a little while to drive it and, you know, see where the power band has moved, where I feel the power, where I don't, what kind of fuel mileage increase, you know, stuff like that. So this may be an ongoing thing, but I want to get started on it today and get them on there. I'm tired of them sitting on my toolbox. Of course, I need to clean the shop anyway, but we're going to go ahead and put them on. I'm going to get as much done as I can today, so it may continue into tomorrow. It just depends, but we get the shop cleaned out. And uh, I'll give y'all a little before and after on what it sounds like. We'll do a side-by-side. -side. I'll get one of the manifolds off. We'll stick it on the bench, set it next to the header. I'll explain a little bit about the uh, flow and so on and so forth. And, you know, all the good stuff that a lot of people don't even listen to. So, anyway, let me get moving. We'll be back. What's doing, kitty kitty? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. All right, here's the rundown. 04 Ranger Edge, two-wheel drive. Regular cab, regular bed, three-liter V6, stick shift. Exhaust manifolds, two-and-a-half-inch head, head pipes, into a piece of three-inch, neck down to two-and-a-half, and a, a three-chamber flow master, and a three-inch dump over the axle. No cats. And, of course... The O2 sensors are zip tied to the frame rail because who needs O2 sensors? We're going to fire it up cold, see what it sounds like with how it is before the headers. boys side by side comparison I want you to take a good hard look do you see the difference now I know it's going to be a little difficult for some people to understand so let me explain it like this if you spend any time on any of them social media platforms which none of them I have but Somehow they end up on YouTube and I get to watch them. There's all these videos of, you know, there, there's a guy and a girl and they're on a date. And the girl finally leaves. The guy shuts the door and he just lets it rip. Okay? Now imagine this. You go on a first date. For some reason you take her to Taco Bell. And the entire night you got the bubble guts. You can't let it go. 
you got to let these little, little bitty squeakers out. You know, little bitty squeakers. And you, you, you know you got the bubble gut going. And it, it, you just don't feel right. You're, you're letting it out little by little. And it, it, it just, it ain't satisfying. So that is this. You got a whole lot built up. And you're only letting it out in little bitty squeakers. Now imagine this being her leaving and you shutting the door and you getting a big one out all at one time. You know how much better that feels? Well, that makes the motor feel that much better. It's able to just release every bit it needs to. You shut the door. She's gone. Let's release all of it. None of these little squeakers no more. So, three liters worth of V6. So we're going to say 1.5 liters per side. And this manifold here, let me move this here. So we're going to look at it. You can already see how it's choked down. Choked down. Choked down. And all three are leading into one pipe that is maybe the size of one so you got three already choked down headed into a pipe that's maybe the size of one and it's coming out and it looks terrible in here too i mean it's just tiny so this this manifold i can get my fingers around it i mean quite a bit that's maybe inch and a half maybe so this is your riding in the car with her. You got the bubble gut and you just can't let but a little bit out of the time because there's no flow. And then here you go. You done dropped her off at the house. You shut the door and you can just let it rip. This engine is going to feel the exact same way you do as soon as you shut the door. Way better. So that's the best way I know how to explain it. Efficiency. Little squeakers. Shutting the door. Feels so much better. This little engine is going to be able to breathe. And by breathe, I mean exhale. You know what I mean. So, there's that side-by-side -side comparison. Here's the passenger side. And here's the driver's side. I mean, it's just going to be... So you, you notice one, one tube is the size of the whole log it's it's just it's gonna breathe so much better and and hopefully when you get more out you can get more in which means more horsepower which means better efficiency and better power to weight ratio so if you got something that weighs a certain amount and you add power you essentially add efficiency because now the engine doesn't have to work as hard to move the vehicle yeah does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, it didn't take me too long to get these things off. And because this is a southern truck, she's fairly rust-free. I only broke two bolts. Just two. Um, not too terrible. I moved a couple things. Moved this here plug. Uh, unplugged a few things. Of course, you know, with these mittens, it's kind of hard to get them down in there. I wasn't made in China. Um, we got them off of there. So I got two bolts I need to extract and I'm going to use my hot glue gun and uh, we'll get them out no problem. And then we'll uh, start installing these bad boys and uh, see what they look like and see what they sound like. All right. First one is in there. I tried and tried to weld me a nut to that broken bolt and get it out of there. And there's something, some kind of funny coating on these bolts of some kind i don't know if it's a galvanized or what but it the it was not working so i ended up drilling and tapping old girl i got her in there one of them is in i gotta probably do some drilling and tapping on the other side but first thing first we got a nasty storm coming and i got about two hours i need to delete this yard uh, it's saying around three or four o'clock. I think it's about noontime now. I just got me a hamburger from the old gas station that was delicious. So we're gonna pull old Kubota out, piss Greta off a little bit, and uh, do a little grass delete on this thing. We'll be back.
Damn it. Change of plans. The weather got here too damn early. Wasn't supposed to be here for another two and a half hours. But it's Memphis. Oh well. Well, I guess we'll get back to working on the Ford motherfucking Ranger. They're in there, boys. Got a nice little view inside the fender wheel. There we go. First start up. Gonna let her warm up. Do a little heat cycle. I'll check all the bolts one more time. Make sure nothing's hitting or rubbing or leaking or I probably got to plug something in or you know, you know. Stuffed up in there real nice. <coughs> Finally got that bolt out on the other side. I kind of had to do some rigging. Uh, couldn't really get to it too well. I don't know how well you can see it. The shock tower's right there, and that top bolt on the header. I couldn't get a straight shot at it with the drill. Uh, if I had an angle drill, it probably would have gone a little better, but I, I, I kind of had to destroy that hole, straighten it out, and retap it, but that bolt worked. And I had to use that bolt because there's a little, little standoff right here kind of supports the intake and then of course the dipstick goes under that same bolt. It worked out well. So I'm gonna let her get up to temperature kind of heat cycle. I'll shut her off, let her cool down, recheck all my bolts and um, yeah she may be good to drive. I'm sure it'll have to go through a learning process. I may disconnect the battery let the computer reset and then go through a learning process because those are going to flow so much more. I'd rather kind of put the fuel trims back at base value. It'll start over and then adapt from there. I'm not sure if that's how this one learns, but it could be. I'm used to old school stuff like my, my old school Ranger. You disconnect the battery, it puts the computer back at base level trims and then it adjusts from there. Every now and then I do that on my Ranger because it's it gets kind of freaked out because it's an old school computer. Um, but yeah, let it heat cycle and then check the bolts and see how she does. impression um, I drove around a little bit yesterday um, it keeps raining like crazy so I didn't get to do too much I can say so normally at 70 miles an hour the tack is at like 2800 yesterday at 70 it was at 2500 so it's dropped my cruise RPM um, I went and put fuel in it. Of course, I hadn't been able to drive it much, so I'm not sure what the fuel mileage is. I'll, I'll figure that out when I go to work. Um, it's so much smoother throughout the entire power band. I mean, it it used to have little dead spots, and then it would pick up and set down, and it's, it's a lot smoother throughout the RPM range. I just fired it up. I'm fitting to go run some errands. It seemed to crank better. It took some of the raspiness out of the exhaust. 
um, and it seems quieter inside the truck. Now that could just be, you know, I'm used to running with the windows down, but when it rains, I have the windows up and it seems to have gotten quieter with the windows up. Um, I don't know if you can hear the truck running. It revs so much smoother. Um, I did notice yesterday in the rain, it spun in the wet quite a bit more than it used to. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to make it spin. I was just trying to, you know, run it and let it relearn. I'm pretty impressed with the headers. Um, I just checked the bolts on it one more time. Everything seems to have be in it, its position. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna continue to do errands and see how it does. Um, I'll come back and uh, we'll look at it one more time. This damn rain just won't stop. It's weird. Anyway, I've gotten some more driving done on it and uh, I'm really enjoying it. It has really smoothed this truck out. Um, if you got one of these trucks with a three liter in it and you're thinking about putting headers on it, I'd say do it. A little high, but I gotta say, well, without saying anything about the fuel mileage yet, because I hadn't driven it far enough to say anything about that, but it really made the truck a lot more drivable, in my opinion. The power band is just so much smoother throughout. Uh, it just, it runs completely different than it did. And that's, that's all I changed this go around was the headers. So, anyway, there's a little video on the install and a little bit of a review on headers for a 3 liter Ranger. Uh, y'all like it, keep watching. I got more stuff to do. We'll see y'all. It's been Turtle Man.